work as clown? Yes, sir. That's oh, what I do for a living. Watch as a speeding motorist realizes that breaking the law is no laughing matter. A disagreement between neighbors turns into a wild free-for-all, and the Wyoming Highway Patrol is called in. It's kind of a bad area, gang area, a lot of drugs. CHP officers prepare for trouble when they spot a car sitting in the middle of the road. These are the real stories of the Highway Patrol. What you're about to see is real. Stories from the files of the California Highway Patrol and other state police agencies across America. Stories from and about patrol officers out on the highways and roads where nothing is ever just routine. Hey. Good morning. How are you? Fine, sir. How are you? All right. What's the problem, officer? You driving just a little bit fast. All right. I wasn't aware of it. Been right at 70, 69 is what I locked in at. Okay. I was under the impression I was uh, on the speed limit, right on the speed limit. I've been traveling and uh, all by the citizen trying to do the right thing with my speed on. Are you vacationing? Yes, sir. I'm also a circus clown traveling. I'm coming back from the job. Uh... A circus clown? Yes, sir. That's oh, what really? I do for a living. Yes, sir. Step right back here. This is just a warning. All right. Okay. Sir. Yes, sir. It's not a ticket. I appreciate that. Like I said, your bumper sticker there. It's not my business to. It's my business to clown around. Right. You gonna be in kind of trouble or anything like that? Never have, neighbors. Hope I never do. Try to be a good person, good citizen, take care of neighbors. And, you know, treat people like you want yeah, to be treated. Yeah. Yeah. You mind if I take a quick look in your car? You don't mind? I don't mind. Okay, let me read this to you. What it is, we have a trouble with drug trafficking and stolen all right. property. All, right. all this is a consensus search form saying it's okay if I search your car and your belongings. Okay, we'll just pop your trunk here for me. Clown suit. Case bags. Is what? This is my suitcase, this is my bags here. Uh, get right. your hands on the car. Put your hands there. Yes, sir. You got the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in court. You have the right to an attorney to have him present with you while you're being questioned. A joint, a clown that smoked dope. Is that right? Boy, boy. You understand what you're under arrest for? Yes, sir. A clown? More marijuana, full of it. Uh, I bet this clown's not laughing. Hey, 24. Whew. That's okay, that's going to be about 50 pounds of marijuana right now. That's what we got. That's a new costume they started wearing. Get the camera? Yeah. Okay. How do you put that on? Not some more. Yeah, some more. It can't be. Yeah, it is. That's the makeup. You violate Arkansas law. That's a sample factory. Sample. Free sample? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and put it back, back in there. Okay. Let's uh, get this clown suit back in there. This is a clown suit? Yeah. Uh, I could smell marijuana when he opened the trunk, but I could smell bounce when I was up there talking to him. Strong. Let's go put a bad guy in jail and uh, get rid of some dope. You understand what you're under arrest for? Yes, sir. Possession with intent to deliver. You know, I'm glad I got you. You're in a bad business, and you cross somebody in your business, and uh, you may not live to do another clown show. Yeah. 
they just stopped in the middle of the street. This is kind of a bad area, gang area, a lot of drugs. How you all doing? Put your hands up on your left for me, buddy. Listen, I stopped you for a couple of reasons. One, you got expired registration. And two, you're sitting in the middle of the street back there, double park. Well, they're waiting for me. For you? So it's your fault? Yeah, kind of. Okay. What are you guys doing tonight? You doing any drinking? I see the 12 pack there. You got any open beers in the car? No, why don't you step out here, driver? Bring your driver's license with me. With you. Oh, you don't have any open beers in the car. What's this? These are both yours? Pretty heavy drinker, aren't you? You need two? Pardon me. You got any beers back there, brother? Huh? No? Lift up that. You have anything in that car that I need to know about? No? Nothing at all. All right. I've already found some alcohol. I'm going to take a look in it. Okay, I'm going to look for some more alcohol. You don't have any weapons or drugs in there? I that you know of? Okay, so you sit tight right here. These types of cars, you know, the reason they like them is this plastic dash and stuff, they can cut it out, conceal guns and drugs and all kinds of good stuff. A little dust here, possibly. Uh, possibly a bottle of PCP. You know anything about this? Just sit tight right there. Keep your hands out of your pocket. I don't know if you're familiar with PCP. Pretty bad stuff. You really don't want to touch it. Absorb it through the skin. Yeah, they were in the car already, as a matter of fact. Yes, we and we didn't know, it, we know they were in the back. Definitely. And we just dropped them off. Just unscrewing the cap. I didn't even take the cap all the way off, and you can smell it. You did the... No, it's not. Go ahead. Stuff. It's just made in clandestine labs. And, uh, what you do is you take a cigarette and dip it or a joint and smoke it. And uh, you'd know it if you saw somebody. It's somebody really under the influence. They kind of look like a zombie. Pretty powerful stuff. You don't want to touch it. It absorbs through the, through the skin. Just smelling the stuff. If you take a big whiff of it, you see you start getting headaches and uh, it's some nasty stuff. Okay, come here. Turn around, put your hands on the back of your head. I'll explain why. Put your hands on the back of your head, turn around, face my partner. Spread them, spread them nice and wide for me. Okay, this was in the back seat. You were in the back seat. You mind the wrist, sir? No. Yes, you are. Possession of PCP. So are you telling me that it was probably theirs? Yeah, it was probably theirs, sir. I don't know anything about it, sir. Okay, well, it was tucked down behind the seat where you were sitting, all right? That kind of puts it in your possession. Now, what I want to try to find out is who it belongs to. And I want some straight answers. Put yourself in my shoes. Do you think these girls left that in the car? Does that sound very likely to you? How much do you think that's worth? I have no idea. A couple hundred dollars anyways. I don't know what this stuff sells for these days, but it's worth a couple hundred dollars at least. I don't think they're just going to leave it in the car. There's a lot of dips left in that box. What I don't believe is I find zigzag papers in your pocket. You're sitting here sir. telling me you don't do drugs. Sir. I don't really sir. buy that. Sir. Sir. I'm have telling you, sir. I, the reason I have the things in my pocket, I, I smoked the joint earlier, sir. I brought the zigzags. I had the joint. I smoked it. I smoked it earlier. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to go to jail. The court's going to be filed with the district attorney's office. And if the district attorney doesn't think there's enough probable cause or enough evidence against you to file the case, they won't file the case. If they think there's enough, then it's going to be between you and a jury. Unfortunately, you're going to jail for this. It's, it's now between you and the courts. Okay, go with my partners here. They're going to take you from here on in. They're going to book you. Next, a neighborhood argument gets out of hand, and the Wyoming Highway Patrol is called in to help. Next, on Real Stories of the Highway Patrol.
When two neighbors got into a fight in Evanston, Wyoming, the local police requested backup. Highway Patrolman Jim Geating answered the call, not knowing he would be putting his own life on the line. On a sunny, warm afternoon in downtown Evanston, Wyoming, a bunch of locals are playing cards and drinking beer in an alley adjoining Bill Patterson's apartment, and he is starting to lose control. One of Bill's neighbors confronts the group and complains about the noise. You're the worst of all. You're my neighbor. Why are you let this happen in our alley? I call the cops. Get out of the alley, you punk. All right, go upstairs and turn your stereo up if you don't like the noise. Yeah, Jim Geating, how you doing? I've been talking to you for two years, and it's nice to finally Officer meet you. Officer Jim Geating like of the Wyoming Highway Patrol drops by dispatch to match a face with the voice yeah, that so often speaks to him when he's out on patrol. This is our call taker station where we take information from the public, and what we do is uh, type in the location, which I already have 10 miles west of Evanston typed in here. Hey, guys, Evanston police got a call some kind of disturbance. Another dispatcher relays a call for assistance. Hey, Freddie, get out of the fraud, would you? Come on, we're not done playing. I was wondering if pretty good. Alcohol and a flirtatious friend send the irate tenant over the edge. Oh, yeah. You're just yelling. Yeah, I'll call you whatever I want to call you. Yes, yeah, I'm yelling. Good job. Oh, not good job. Come on, man, let's play card. Oh, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. The Evanston police arrive on the scene, but decide to wait for backup before going upstairs after Patterson. Even though this dispute technically falls under the jurisdiction of the city police, in Wyoming, unlike some other jurisdictions, the highway patrol is often called in to assist other agencies with everything from bar fights to homicides to domestic disturbances. And on this day, an out-of-control neighborhood dispute What do you got? That guy's involved in a fight. He ran up the stairs here. He's up here now? Yeah, he had a knife with him. He's got a knife? Yeah. Okay, all right. Hey, bring her up for a minute. Come here, here. What do you know about this guy? Real jerk. Always causing trouble. Okay, all right. Is there another way into that room? No. You sure? Yeah, possibly. Okay, why don't you go on up and I'll be right with you. I'll back you from down here. And then clear the alley. Come back here, man. The sergeant approaches the apartment with caution and readiness, also confident he is covered from below. Police, open up. Police, I need to talk to you. What's going on, officers? He's always in trouble. Get back in your apartment now. He's got to be in there. Hearing the deadly sound of a shotgun chambering around, fearing for his life, the police officer bolts from the deck, spraining his ankle as he falls. The deadly stakes of a standoff now begins. If you got a shotgun in there, buddy, you better come out now. Get out of here, all of you. I'll kill anyone that comes near me. Nobody wants to bother you or hurt you. We just need to talk it over. Come on. I don't want to talk to anybody. See here? I'm not kidding. I can do it. I can kill y'all. As the afternoon passes, Officer Geating patiently waits for a potentially deadly altercation to diffuse itself. Come on out. Come on. Let's go. Come on. I'm getting hungry, man. I'm sure you are, too. Let's go. Come on out. You got the door open. Now, come on out. Dude, get back in the house now. One of the suspect's neighbors almost upsets the scene. What's your name, anyway? My name's Jim. Oh, big tough trooper, huh? No, 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 I'm just a man, all right? I want to work with you on this. OK, you want to come over to the stairs? You want to come on down? I'll come down if somebody meets me halfway. You want somebody to meet you? I want somebody to meet me halfway. No, 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 you're laying your gun down. Nobody's coming up there unless you lay that thing down. Finally, 
Patterson sees Keating as a man behind the badge. Becoming worn out, he decides to find a way to get out of his no-win situation. Come on down. Put your hands up. Easy now. Laying up against the wall. Okay, bring this arm back. Bring it back. Take it easy. Relax. I got you. You know, when I went into his apartment that day, I found a virtual arsenal. Handguns, knives, a couple more shotguns, survival magazines. He had a real problem. He never did go over the edge that day. He never did push me too far. But had he done so, he would have sealed his own fate. Okay, let's go. I was glad to hear that after this happened, he had received medical treatment. And he's now out, leading a productive life and doing well. Next, stay tuned as Texas State Troopers are reminded that there's no such thing as a routine traffic stop. Next, on Real Stories of the Highway Patrol. Patrol officer retires. He or she may believe they've seen it all. Texas Highway Patrol Officer Gary Clayton recently got the chance to add one more to his list. Hello. Hi. My name's Clayton with the Highway Patrol. How you doing tonight? Excuse me just a minute. My purse is in the back. I got something I need to show you. Okay, won't you get your purse there? Okay, and let's step back here and let's get out of the traffic lane. And I'm going to uh, advise you why you stop. Stopped. You did know why you stopped? I'm sure it's that. It's yes, ma'am. Won't you uh, stand on this way a little bit? And let's get away from between that traffic right here. Did you get my on tape for it? Uh, yes, ma'am. You've been on tape. You've been videotaped. Uh, that was the reason you stopped. You have your license with you? Well, yes, somewhere. It doesn't look quite like I look now. If you don't mind me asking, uh, where are you headed to? I'm headed home. All right. Won't you get your purse and let's stand away from you? Stand away from this trap plane. We fool around there and get run over out there. Okay. What? Might get run over out there. Oh. Okay. okay. Stand in between those cars. Need to go to the highway department. See about getting you a temporary tag. Okay. Yeah. But again, I'm gonna have to go ahead and issue a citation for expired registration on the car. Do you have insurance on your vehicle? Yes, I do. And I probably can't find that much easier than I found the last thing. Okay. Okay, this is expired. None of, none of these are a current one. I, I do have insurance currently. All right. And I, I don't know. Okay. Um, but I can show up. I'll tell you what I'm going to Okay. I'll tell you uh, what, I'm, what I'll have to do. I'll go and issue a citation for no insurance. Okay. Okay. All you have to do is just take it into the judge's office. Okay. And then they'll go ahead and dismiss the whole lot of insurance. Appreciate your courtesy and cooperation. Okay, ma'am, be careful. Okay. I'm the man. Thousands of lives every year in this country. In states where safety belt laws have been adopted, traffic fatalities have shown a significant decline. In some cases, down by a full third. These numbers become even more significant because millions of new drivers are using our roads and highways every year. The main reason is easy to identify. In every state where safety belt usage goes up, traffic deaths go down. Whenever you drive or are driven anywhere, buckle up. Men and women of the Highway Patrol and State Police Agencies of America, thank you for watching.